guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tuscany and today I'm going to show you how I made this adorable little floating collar, collar thing, false collar, fake collar, yeah, this. It's not attached to a shirt underneath. So anyway, grab a cup of tea and let's get into it. I've been wanting to make something like this for quite some time just because I like the look of having that white blouse underneath a sweater. However, I don't enjoy wearing a full blouse underneath a sweater. I think it can feel very suffocating. It can be awkward to get the shirt in under the sweater. It can show and look kind of awkward and sometimes it's just too hot. I work indoors and I don't need all those layers so I just wanted to make a floating collar that would be easy to pin on to anything and it would also be easy and quick to make. Uh, making a whole shirt would be a lot more work and a skill set that I don't have quite yet. Needless to say, I just wanted a quick and easy project. I'm super happy with how it turned out. It really gives me that old librarian stereotypical kind of look that I love and it took me less than a day to make so I'll show you how I did it. So as per usual with me I went into this with no plan and no pattern and no idea how I was going to achieve it. So I did not use a pattern for this project. Now I didn't really go into this project with a pattern in mind. I just had a vague idea of what I wanted it to look like and worked my way to that point. So I first started off measuring the base of my neck. And with that circumference, I then went in and did some fancy math to figure out the diameter. This equation was easy enough. Just take your circumference and divide it by pi. The easiest thing for me to do then was just take that number and round up to the nearest whole number. Once I had the diameter figured out, I then took my handy dandy circle cutter and cut out the circle on some scrap paper. After that, I cut the circle in half. This is just how my brain works. If you think that there is an easier way to do it, then go ahead. Um, my brain just functions in this manner, so I apologize. <laughs> Once I had half the circle ready to go, or I suppose the negative of half a circle, I then went in and started drafting a pattern for the collar. I knew that I wanted it to droop down a bit further on the front end than I did on the back. So I went ahead and measured that 3 inches on the bottom and 2 inches on the back. From here it was just a bit of messing around. I cut it out and checked it along my neck, see if I liked it, and then adjusted it. I realized that a perfect circle didn't really fit very well, so I adjusted it to making it more oval shape. Of course there is some guesswork involved because this was initially done in paper which does sit differently than fabric. Now that my pattern was all set, I was able to trace it on to some pre-ironed fabric, making sure to trace two fronts and two backs. Now this fabric doesn't really have a front and a back, so it was easy enough for me to flip things around as need be. However, if you do have a fabric that has a front and a back, then be very careful about this. Once it was all traced, then I just had to cut it out. I knew that I wanted it to tie in the front, and this was very important to figure out before sewing it, because I had to insert the ribbon while sewing. So when I was matching up the pieces to sew together, I went ahead and inserted the ribbon in between the pieces and then pinned them together. I had to be very careful when sewing around the ribbon to make sure that I wasn't sewing it to the top of the collar, but only to the front side. I also didn't want to sew close what would be the back seam. I wanted to leave that open so I could flip it inside out. After sewing it together, I did just that. I flipped it inside out and used the bone folder to push out all the seams. And then followed that with some ironing. Now it was time to do the second side, following the same exact procedure. Now that I had both sides sewn and ironed, I could then sew them together. As for the back seam allowance that was still showing, I just flipped it in on itself 
and did some quick stitches to seal it. This is really difficult to explain. I do try to show it as best as possible in the video, but I apologize if it comes off a little confusing. I'm also the worst at explaining things in general, <laughs> so my apologies for that as well. Now the collar at this point is basically done. I just had to iron that back seam and then I wanted to add a few little hoops on the inside so that I could actually clip it to my shirt. I move a lot at work and I didn't want the collar to go askew because it looks very awkward when that happens. So I wanted to be able to pin it to my shirt in order for it to stay in place while I'm moving all the time. Now that the hoops were in, it was easy enough to be able just to clip it to my shirt using bobby pins. So there you have it, a super easy, very quick and cute floating collar, fake collar, faux collar. And now I can go about my days looking like an old librarian that just wants people to be quiet. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you try something similar. It's crazy easy and a really great beginner sewing project. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hit that like button or maybe even subscribe. Have a great January. What day is it? Have a great week and I'll see y'all next time.